Oftentimes, when people think about the Arctic, they imagine a beautiful wilderness unscathed by modern society. In reality, this is a harsh, cold, unforgiving environment which has become the foundation of Inuit culture in Nunavut, Canada, but their entire way of life is under immediate threat from climate change. Nunavut is the northernmost territory of Canada and is inhabited primarily by the Inuit people. The Inuit are an indigenous group whose traditional lifestyle relies heavily on the environment, with a key component of their culture built on their traditional ecological knowledge. This involves an extensive understanding of the land, passed down through generations. Children are taught that the land has implicit value and that the community fosters a spiritual connection with the environment. This comprehensive understanding of the environment allows the Inuit to utilize the unique characteristics of their land to sustain their community. 41% of Inuit community members continue to rely on traditional meat for half of their diet. Hunters are tasked with providing this food, relying on their extensive knowledge of the landscape dynamics. However, this environment is rapidly changing, threatening their traditional lifestyle and their very existence. The Earth's climate is an intricate and fragile system that supports life and influences culture around the world. Human actions are altering the climate system, causing disruptions in various environments. Human-induced climate change has been observed through a variety of impacts. The Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, otherwise known as the IPCC, is an organization of leading climate scientists dedicated to creating a consensus on the current state of the environment and climate change. The IPCC report is meant to inform the general public as well as policymakers about future climate predictions. The report states that from 1880 to 2012, global average land and sea temperatures have risen 0.85 degrees Celsius. In the last 20 years alone, there has been a 0.2 degree increase. Clearly, there has been a dramatic warming effect. Future estimates of global warming depend on various emission scenarios. However, the general consensus is that warming by 2100 will range from 2 degrees to 4 degrees Celsius. 97% of climate scientists agree that human activity is driving climate change. The Industrial Revolution made fossil fuel combustion the engine of our global economy, leading to a dramatic increase in carbon emissions. The expansive production that ensued was supported by capitalism, in which industry and government valued maximizing profits and minimizing costs. The adoption of neoliberal ideology reduced government regulations, and businesses began to disregard any negative social or environmental externalities of their actions. Since the beginning of the Industrial Revolution, 40% of greenhouse gas emissions have remained in our atmosphere, which has created a blanket that traps heat and leads to the warming of the Earth. While greenhouse gases are natural in the atmosphere and keep the planet at a temperature that's suitable for life, human consumption is amplifying the greenhouse effect and is causing rapid warming to occur. While climate change is a global issue, Arctic nations are feeling disproportionate effects of warming due to polar amplification. According to the IPCC report, polar amplification is the process through which solar radiation has a more severe effect on polar regions than when compared to the global average. In addition, the potential for an albedo flip is increasingly threatening this region. Albedo is the reflective capacity of the Earth's surface, and as warming continues, less sea ice will be present, and the albedo will steadily decrease. If enough sea ice melts, then the region could hit a tipping point where the ocean absorbs more heat than the ice can reflect. This creates a positive feedback loop in which the rate of ice melt increases as it occurs. Due to polar amplification and albedo, the Arctic region is highly vulnerable to climate change and global warming. Scientific data and anecdotal evidence from the Inuit community is showing that winter freeze-ups of sea ice are happening later than in the past and that spring breakup is occurring much sooner. Warming conditions are causing less multi-year sea ice to exist and overall thinner, weaker sea ice. Sea ice loss is having devastating impacts on the Inuit people in Nunavut, Canada. Ice loss is being driven by human-induced climate change. However, the Inuit are not significant carbon emitters. In fact, their annual emissions are so minute that they do not even appear on this graph of Canada's emission statistics from 1990 to 2014. Given the lifestyle of the Inuit, the harmful effects of climate change in the Arctic represent a form of distributional injustice on the Inuit community. Eijman discusses distributional injustice as an unfair or disproportionate allocation of environmental harms. The deterioration of sea ice severely limits the capacity of Inuit to live their traditional lifestyle, particularly when it comes to hunting. For Inuit hunters, sea ice is an integral part of their traditional hunting methods. Over time, hunters have developed and passed down strategic hunting techniques which utilize the sea ice to locate and catch their prey. Seals are a major component of the Inuit diet 
and hunters must have a keen eye to find seals on the vast icy horizon. Hunters travel the ice while looking for distinct characteristics that point out a seal lair. Such characteristics are a depression in the snowdrift, an abnormally strong light reflection off the dirt, or by the roof of the lair has melted through. Once the seal lair is found, the hunters must then deploy a variety of methods to capture the seal. Traditional seal hunting techniques are lair breaking and needling. Lair breaking entails jumping into the ice drifts and crashing through the snow covered roof of the structure. If a seal is found inside the lair, then the hunters have to quickly work to fish it out before escaping. The needle technique is a more time consuming and delicate process that only the most skilled and knowledgeable hunters can effectively pull off. The needle technique is when the hunter sticks a harpoon deep into the lair and lowers a string down into the breathing hole. Once the seal returns to the hole and hits the thread, it triggers its arrival to the hunter. The hunter standing ready with his harpoon then strikes down and captures the seal. Clearly, traditional hunting is a skill intensive process that requires an understanding of the landscape and its characteristics. However, changing climatic conditions are threatening hunters' traditional abilities. Normally in October, sea ice freezing is now beginning in November, which consequently is leading to thinner, non-uniform ice. This is important because hunters must travel further distances on new routes in order to reach hunting grounds. In these new conditions, travel is becoming a major hazard because it is more difficult for the thin ice to support their weight. Also, hunting for seals at the flow edge, where ice connected to land meets the sea, was a popular technique before substantial warming occurred. However, decreased ice thickness has raised the possibility of flow ice breaking off from the land, leaving hunters stranded and drifting out to sea. Nunavut has always been a harsh living environment, but these new factors are presenting challenges that only exacerbate the previous issues. Sea ice data shows that between 1982 to 2005, the open water season has increased 1.92 days per year. As a result, the hunting grounds, which are the source of livelihood for the Inuit community, are disappearing more and more every year. Hunting is integral to the Inuit lifestyle. Among Inuit communities, it is commonly understood that to be authentic, one must live off the land and sea through hunting, fishing, trapping, and camping. Traditionally, hunters venture out into the icy environment in search of caribou and seals to bring back to their community. This country food captured is then distributed among members, providing sustenance to the community. With changing ice regimes due to climate change, food scarcity is becoming a prominent social justice issue as hunters are unable to maintain their typical catches. The impracticability of traditional hunting methods in the changing landscape is linked to identity loss as traditional ecological knowledge that has been passed down for generations becomes outdated and the Inuit people lose this vital connection to their environment. These environmental and social injustices due to decreased hunting viability resulting from climate change creates a bleak future for Inuit communities. Further ice loss in the Arctic, along with other impacts of climate change, are inevitable. Adaptation is the only viable option for the Inuit people. This can take the form of altering their hunting methods and techniques to fit the changing ice composition and animal migration patterns. This would require a shift away from traditional ecological knowledge, as hunters are forced to adopt adaptive learning strategies in which hunters use their current experiences to shape a new understanding of their modified environment. Another adaptive approach is for Inuit communities to adopt more modernized ways of living, typical to the global north. Many Inuit families have been forced to move into urban centers to get access to imported food in order to survive. However, this store-bought food is expensive and many Inuit people cannot afford these products. In addition, there is potential for cultural degradation and identity loss with this shift, which has led to social issues with alcoholism and suicide in communities attempting to adopt in this way. The variety of injustices that plague the Arctic as a result of climate change are burdens that Inuit communities should not have to bear alone. As the global environmental justice movement has grown, there is a general consensus that global northern nations, the ones primarily contributing to climate change, have an ethical responsibility to assist those who are bearing the brunt of the environmental harms. How should Inuit communities be justly compensated for their losses as a result of sea ice melt? Financial compensation has been a common response to addressing environmental injustices. However, the process of compensation is contentious because it is difficult to quantify the environmental and social costs experienced by marginalized communities. Procedural justice is a method to help streamline compensation to more accurately address the specific needs of the community. By giving the Inuit a greater voice in governmental procedures and decisions, they have the ability to create and enforce policy that fairly compensates them for their losses. This political empowerment gives them the greater control of their future well-being. With capitalism and neoliberalism in control of the global economy, new heights of human accomplishment have been reached. 
Yet, it is important to keep in mind that behind the success of industrialization, there are communities suffering from negative environmental externalities. The Inuit of Nunavut, Canada are a prime example of a community experiencing global climate change injustice. While continuance of traditional hunting methods will become increasingly unfeasible as the landscape changes, maintenance of their culture and livelihood is possible with adaptive learning, global awareness and assistance, and political empowerment of the Inuit community.